To make plasma television super thin, you need to harness a fundamental cosmic force. The glass screen is filled with gas, but not just any gas. It's the gas that makes the northern lights flicker in the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere. It's the gas that lights the sky with lightning rods hotter than the surface of the sun, and it's called plasma. It's the weird substance behind these natural wonders, which is the secret ingredient in ultra-thin TVs. So, how do they do it? It's a rainy day in Miyazaki, South Japan. In this factory, Hitachi make half a million plasma TVs every year. This may look like a normal television screen, but look closer and you'll see not one but two glass plates clamped together. It's what happens in between that is the secret to the production of the ultra-thin plasma television. Between the plates lies a matrix of a million individual and minute cells, each one a fraction of an inch tall. Across the top and bottom layers of the glass are hundreds of thin electrodes crisscrossing one another. Their job is to create an electric environment that charges a mix of inert gases that will soon fill up those cells. The gases are called neon and xenon. Once charged with electricity, they create plasma. Most people imagine there are only three states of matter, liquid, gas and solid. But there's a fourth, plasma. And believe it or not, it makes up nearly all the visible matter in our universe. By charging certain gases with electricity, it's possible to create plasma. And this plasma transmits light. So how do you recreate the northern lights inside a TV screen? First of all, fill it with neon and xenon. This tiny glass tube is fitted to the back of the screen by a robotic welding device. Using the tube, air will be sucked out and a gas cocktail will be pumped in. A short trip to an airtight section of the factory where the gas is stored. This is where chemistry meets engineering. The screens emerging from the chamber are full of gas, but there's one problem. Charged neon and xenon only generate ultraviolet light, invisible to the human eye. The solution? Another clever bit of chemistry. Each cell has been coated alternately with a red, green and blue chemical called a phosphor. So each pair of glass plates now contains a matrix of microscopic electrical wires and a honeycomb of minute cells, each filled with neon and xenon and now delicately coated in various kinds of phosphorus chemicals. All that's needed to make the plasma do its stuff is the flick of a switch. This technician is creating a kind of electric storm right in front of our eyes. As an electrical charge surges around the components, the screens burst into life and a plasma TV is born. This explosion of coloured light shows the phosphors and the plasma are working. Now it's the job of the electrical circuits to combine the right cells to produce the right colours. Plasma can identify a million colours. That's more colours than the human eye can recognise. I think plasma is a great technology. But a TV that runs on gas with a little help from electricity poses peculiar problems. In a normal TV, you don't want faulty electrical circuits. In a plasma TV, you don't want a gas leak. So the screens visit the ageing room. 
In here, hundreds of plasma screens are switched on and left for hours to make sure the chemicals are contained and stable. The plasma screen is working, but there are no pictures yet. There are no tuners, no receivers, no aerials. There's still a plasma TV to be built. Generating sound and vision involves thousands of individual components. Stored on reels of plastic, they're fired at high speed onto circuit boards. High pressure plastic injection machines produce the various casings for the different sizes of plasma TVs made here. Then everything is brought together on the production line. Circuit boards which control the signal, the power, formats and tuners are all placed on the inner back wall of the TV. But right now the screen has a poor contrast ratio, giving off a kind of milky grey light. So another screen is added to increase the contrast. Then everything is checked again. Color bars make sure each TV is producing the correct colors, whites and blacks, rather than muddy grays. Test patterns, formats and functions all need to be assessed. These guys at least get to watch the front of a TV screen. Spare a thought for Satoshi Maruono. It may sound like robotic bedlam, but to Satoshi's trained ear, the chirps and squeaks tell him if the TV's working as it should. And some tests involve a highly technical process. He's listening for loose screws. Satoshi sees the back of hundreds of TVs every day, and he'd much rather be watching the front. I love TVs so much that I make them for a living. I don't have a plasma TV myself yet, but I do dream about getting one. After packing and boxing, a few TVs are chosen for one last bone-shaking quality check. Every now and again, a television is taken off the line and subjected to a spell in the vibration chamber. A metal floor plate shakes the TV to make sure everything is screwed together properly and that there are no loose parts. When you open your TV's packaging, Everything should have been shaken, but not stirred. As the workday comes to a close, the TV sets are loaded onto trucks to be shipped around the world. Box upon box of cosmic plasma destined for your living room. The plasma technology behind your flat screen TV is now also used in manned space flight as a propellant in spacecraft thrusters. Back in the factory in Japan, the day shift is over and the workers have gone, leaving the plasma sets switched on to dream quietly of the northern lights in glorious technicolor. Five.